yourself shot, Mr. Kane. Resisting arrest. Who's he? A boy I just hired to work at the ranch. He has nothing to do with this. Better go on out, youngster. Pretty heavy artillery for a bandy rooster to be carrying around. Stay where you are. Get them guns, Hagen, before he trips on them and gets hurt. Let's have him. I said, let's have them, or do I take them off you? Nobody takes my gun. Why, you... Man said, get. Get. You'll be hearing about this, Mr. Kane. You too, kid. What's your name? Bonnie. William Bonnie. Where from? Texas. That's a lot of territory, Texas. Pretty handy with them guns for a boy your age. I didn't start it. Ask him, they saw what happened, they saw the whole thing. Easy, Billy. We all know you had to do what you did in self-defense. This is only for the record. Boy's still on edge, Mr. Copeland. I think all of us are. Roger, I don't like it. 
I that we owe the young man something. But I don't like the idea of your taking him out to the ranch and keeping him around. We can hardly go to the governor and accuse Harper of hiring professional gunfighters and then proceed to do the same thing ourselves. This boy is no gunfighter. Just the same. As your lawyer, as well as your business partner. I say, give him a few dollars and a horse and send him on his way. I've got a horse. I'm sorry, Alex. I promised him a job. You're making a mistake. I'll work in your cage. What do you know about it, except that he spent one night at your house? I know. I hear from my cousin in Santa Fe. He's a good boy in Chivito. In Chivito? In Spanish, that is like you say, a little goat, the kid. Really? The kid. Mr. Cage. Yes? Wagons are coming. Hiring. Do what you want. Morales, go over to the house and say Mrs. Kane is arriving. Come on, Roger. I want you to meet her. Oh, my foreman, Billy. Mr. Morgan. I won't be long. La señora Kane is coming out, all prepared, Alexander, but it seems to have left me. There's plenty of time for that. Oh, Maria, Lupita, Margarita, Morales, this is your mistress, Mrs. King. Bienvenida. Servidora. Tanto gusto. Señora. My dear, Mr. Jameson. Roger, my wife. How do you do? A great pleasure. Mr. Jameson is the English gentleman I wrote you about. Oh, yes, the English lord. Not anymore. I put all that behind me when I came to America, Mrs. King. Welcome to New Mexico. Thank you. Sheriff Copeland. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, ma'am. Morales, let's not stand around. Stay busy. Hey, you there. Kindly keep your hands off the piano. My dear, come on, I'll show you the house. I was beginning to think you'd never get here. How's the family? Oh, mother and father are both well. They sent you some love. Go to the town of Lincoln today and you can still see where Billy the Kid carved his name nearly three quarters of a century ago. A kid from Texas. A pawn in the war that had already started for the rich grazing lands of the Southwest. Well, Billy, we have a long drive Billy, been a bit on the run, haven't you? 
He'd tell me what about if you'd rather not. I was a wild one myself at your age. India, Canada, Australia. Many's the night I had to tuck myself away in a muddy ditch. <laughs> Seems a long time ago now. Does your family know where you are, Billy? No. Have a right to them? Nope. Like that, was it? How long since you ran away from home? Oh, seven, eight years ago. What happened? I killed somebody. Fight? A man bad named my mother, so I killed him. Where was this? Colorado. Silver City. Ever been back? No, sir. Eight years ago. Been on your own ever since, eh? Is your mother still alive, Billy? I guess so. Silver City? No, Santa Fe. Your father? He died in Kansas. My mother married again. You needn't tell me any more of that. I didn't like him. He, he was drunk all the time. Look, Mr. Jameson, why don't you come to that point? If you've changed your mind about the job, say so. I haven't changed my mind, nor do I intend to. But there's one thing. What? You're among friends here. I want you to stay. But I'd like it a lot better if you'd allow me to put those guns away for you. You don't need them here. You see that cabinet? They'll be perfectly safe in there. Anytime you think you need them, they'll be right there. Counselor's got his bridle on. <laughs> but I wonder if... What's it to you? Well, well. Hello, Mrs. Hello. How nice to see you, Alex. What? A... Won't you come in?
Beautiful. Beautiful. Now it's your turn. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't think of it, not after that. And I insist. No, as no. fond as I am of music, there's a little matter of business I have to take up with Roger. More trouble? Not exactly. I'll have to be gone for about a week. I've been summoned to a hearing. Santa Fe. General Wallace. I'm a new territorial governor. Personally, I welcome such a meeting. Our hands are clean. I just want to make sure that we're in accord about any points that might be raised. You know anything you do is all right with me, Alex. The way things have been going, the ranch is more yours than mine, I'm afraid. I'd hardly say that. Alexander, if you don't mind, I'll leave you men while you talk business. Of course. Confidentially, I haven't been at all easy in my mind these past few weeks. After the last visit we had from Major Harper's bullies... I doubt if he'd risk a collision with General Wallace. It isn't like Harper to take a licking lying down. I just didn't expect anyone. I'm real sorry. I'm all right now. Are you one of Mr. Jameson's men? Yes, ma'am. I was just out here listening to you play. Oh? That was real nice. Well, thank you. I'm Mrs. Alexander Kane. I know. I saw you in town today when you arrived. It was all so new, coming to a strange place. All those people. I don't think I saw anyone, not really. Have you worked for Mr. Jameson long? Not very. I thought... Well, I imagine he'd have men that were older. They are, mostly. He's nice, isn't he? Yes, ma'am, mighty nice. Once you get used to his way of talking. <laughs> I should go back in. It's lovely out, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. What do you do for Mr. Jameson? Ride. Ride fence. Doctor said cows they got any. Anything you tell me. Sounds interesting. Well, I like it. I aim to get me a spread of my own someday. Oh? You don't get anywhere away from someone else. No, I don't imagine you do, do you? No. I really should go back in, but it's such a beautiful night. <laughs> I guess I've already said that, haven't I? Yes, ma'am. Mm. Honeysuckle. Orange tree. Oh? It's down by the spring house. The wind blows it this way. For a moment, I thought it was... No, ma'am. All right. We had a big honeysuckle vine over the back porch at home in Missouri. Yes, ma'am. We have an orange tree in the patio in town. At least Mr. Kane says it's one, but I don't believe it blooms. Maybe it's the wrong kind or something. Maybe. But Mr. Kane says it's too young yet to bloom. It's a special variety. He had it shipped up here all the way from Mexico. We have a lemon tree, too. And grapes. Mr. Kane says you can grow anything at all in this climate if you just get water to it. Mr. Kane experiments with everything. Did you know he once studied for the ministry? No, I didn't. He did. And then he became a lawyer. Mr. Kane is a self-made man. My parents have always respected him tremendously. He's awfully intelligent. Practically everyone in Lincoln comes to him for advice. Well, it's been very pleasant meeting you, Mr. Irene. What are you doing here? Alexander, we were only... This is Mr. Barney, William Barney. I've already had the pleasure. Hello, Billy. 
You better get your things. It's getting late. Night, Mr. Jameson. Good night, Vivian. But a hammerhead you are. I sent four grown men out to do a job and only two of them come back with their tails between their legs. Who was this kid? You must have found out that much about I him. I told you. Nobody well, know who he was, Major Harper. Go and get your supper. Just looking at you, turns a man's stomach. Mm. I don't by your warrants ain't much good anymore, Sheriff. Well, we got work others, we got men. Mr. Kane wants to play rough, we can make life right interesting for him. General Lew Wallace, appointed acting governor by the President of the United States, had come to Santa Fe with only one instruction. End the war in Lincoln County, establish peace. Gentlemen, I wouldn't even pretend to reach a decision now. Not without a more detailed investigation. However, I will say this. Personally, I think you've both been acting foolishly. Poisoning each other's wells. Running off each other's stock. Can't you see that retaliation will only meet with more retaliation? Men shot only with more men shot? No, obviously you can't. All right, you want a decision. I'll make my investigation as rapidly as possible. In the meantime, I must insist that you keep the peace. Is that agreed? Suits me. Delighted. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Governor. Many men. What men? Senor Harper's men are found here, them in the cantina. They drunk. They say they come here, make trouble. Make trouble for who? Senor Kane, Senor Hamison, Chivito, you go run. Miniger, he bad men. He kill you like that. Miniger ain't gonna kill nobody. What's all this about, old fella? Oh, a bunch of Harper's curly wolves hit down this morning and start pouring red eye. Then along the line, this Minninger fella suddenly recollects a, a piece of unfinished business, he calls it. And, and they should want I know, I know. Where do you come into this? Yeah, you've got the Harper brand on your own room from what I hear. Now look, boys, I take a dollar here and there, but I don't wear nobody's brand. They have got this warrant, and they are on their way out here to serve it, and uh, settle a score with a kid at the same time. Of course, if it ain't worth anything to you. Just a minute, boys. Billy? You men go on about your work. I'll handle this. Thanks, old fallon. <laughs> you too, Morales. <laughs> Gracias, senor. Yeah, much obliged. Hey, you're making hay, I see. That's guy work. Makes a man thirsty even uh, thinking about it. Uh, come on, Morales. Do it. I gave Mr. Kane my word there'd be no gunplay while he was away. Probably nothing more than a tempest in the teapot anyway. He'll get drunk, shoot out a window or two, and that'll be the end of it. You've changed, Billy, since we put those guns away. Let's leave them there, shall we? You know, I shouldn't wonder but what we'll end up making you a model citizen. It's a queer thing about wearing guns. A gun draws trouble to you. 
We've already had enough trouble for one lifetime, haven't we, Billy? Yes, sir. Mr. Jameson, here they come! Stay where you are and leave this to me. No guns, promise me. You say so, sir. Good lad. If they're looking for trouble, Mr. James, I want you men to keep out of this. What can I do for you boys? Where's the kid? Yeah, some of us ain't never seen that Texas pistol Earl. We'd admire to make his acquaintance. You don't want him. You men, he's only a boy. Of course, if it's me you want. We want that kid. Now, wait a minute. I want no trouble here. This is private property. You're all trespassing. Trespassing. <laughs> Somebody right into town and get a doctor. There ain't no doctor in Lincoln. There ain't no doctor for a hundred miles. Help me get him inside the house. One did. There was quite a few of them you couldn't rightly see. I want the name of every man who was out there. Who were they? Well, it was Minger. And then and Lucas and Costa. And Big Nose and Levering. And then Gill. We got him. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again at the resurrection, at the last days. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. like I was good enough to shake hands with him. He took me in when I was on the run, and when they tried to put me on the run again, he said no. Nobody else ever gave me that much. I didn't realize you thought that much of Mr. James. I'll get every man that had a hand in this killing. It's the last thing I ever do. I was just wondering. I'll be taking over the ranch. If you've no other plans, you might stay here and work for me if you'd like. 
I thought you didn't want me around. I'm sure we'll get along. Come on. Now, you know what we want. You've all been sworn in. Mr. Morgan, since you are Mr. Jameson's foreman, I'll make you the head of the posse. Boys, you all know that Mr. Jameson was like a brother to me. Even so, I'm opposed to this. However, since you've already made up your minds, I realize it would be futile to attempt to stand in your way. Therefore, I have this to say. Remember, this is not a raiding party. We want the men who committed this crime brought into trial. However, we want no uncalled for violence. You leave it to us, Counselor. It's three o'clock. It'll be daylight by the time you get to the Mescalero. Mr. Kane, I didn't know you felt that way about it. I, I wish you'd have said something. Copeland, you worry too much. Good night. Good night. I know. I tried to stop them, but they refused to listen. You shouldn't be worrying about these things. Go back to sleep. sending those gunslingers over to murder Mr. Jameson, keeping the peace. Now, Major Harper was in Santa Fe at the time. You know that. You were there yourself. Anyway, two wrongs don't make a right, and we've made a complete report of the matter to Santa Fe. Yes, I can imagine what kind of a report that was. Now, just a minute, Mr. Gaines. Major Harper's willing to call a truce if you are. You lay off your gunslingers, and he'll lay off his. It so happens that I don't employ gunslingers. Oh, no? What about that kid Jameson had working for him? What would you call him? Well, that boy? Boy. Suppose I told you there were a half a dozen warrants out for his arrest right now. One for killing a man up in Silver City, Colorado, eight years ago with a knife. Another for killing four Chiricahua Indians eight years ago. Well, that's ridiculous. That boy couldn't have been more than 12 years old. You don't judge a rattlesnake by his age. He's a rattler whether he's got one rattler or a dozen. Tell us what this is all about. Little Billy. 
You, go saddle up their horses. You, you bet. Get their guns, O'Fallon. The rest of you know where number seven is. O'Fallon and I'll bring them in. I'm riding with you. All right. But we're bringing them in the way we said we would. All in one piece. sound just fine up in Santa Fe. I had nothing to do with it. I never ordered anybody killed. I placed myself on record last night against bloodshed. You murdering little fool. So you're finally coming to your senses. All right, Bonnie, this was your party. You come with me. Oh, no, you don't. Is this a posse that went out or wasn't it? Well, uh, well you swore us in. Yes, I did. What's all the fuss about? I told you... Alexander. Yes? If they were all sworn in, you can't allow him to be arrested for doing only what he thought was right. That's right. The kid only done his duty, Mr. King. All right. All right. The boy was deputized. You mean you're standing up for him? I'm not standing up for anybody. This has to be investigated. The entire matter will be reported immediately to General Wallace at Santa Fe, supported by sworn affidavits. Meanwhile, the boy will remain here in my custody. Well, you're finally out in the open with it. Buying this crazy gun kill right out here in public. I hope you're happy with the nuts off. It 
was once in the saddle, I used to go dashing. Oh, once in the saddle, I used to go gay. First to the dram house and then to the card house. Got shot in the breast and I'm dying today. Oh, boy. <laughs> we should put them things away, Billy. Guns make me nervous. Besides, them two-bit tarantulas is probably clear on up to Oregon by now. Ay, pero viste que joven es. Veo que no es para ti. Con cada hombre que viene es lo mismo. Debe a casarse. Trouble you, Billy, is you got a one-track mind. If I was your age, there's a couple of little tortillas there just to pile it away for you. <laughs> Where's the air, senorita? So beat the drum slowly and play the pipe lowly and play the dead march as you carry me along. Chivito, Senor O'Fallon, Senor Kane, say to come to El Estor right away. What do you think we are, Pearl? Do this, do that, go here. I ain't cut out for this steady work. That's delicate. Good afternoon, O'Fallon. Good afternoon. Afternoon, ma'am. Thank you for pruning my orange tree. Maybe it'll bloom now. Maybe. Well, my dear, ready to go? Whenever you are. Several cases of dry goods just came in. You can open them up. something about my brother, Mr. Kane. Don't worry, we will. Four hundred, eh? Billy, take Sid, go out to the ranch and join the others. Take Morales and O'Fallon with you. I want every steer back, every one. If anyone tries to stand in your way, you have my authorization to shoot on sight. Yes, sir. Take plenty of ammunition. Stop at the store and get whatever you need. Right. Don't you think you ought to take a little slow, Counselor? We know this is your private squabble, but... Are you suggesting I stand idly by and see my men ambushed? My property destroyed? No, but this is just like declaring war. I'm aware of that. Major Harper wants war, he'll get war. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But Alexander, what about the men? I know they're working for you, but do you think it's fair to... My men are just as tired of this whole situation as I am. They feel it is time to act, not talk. Ya estoy listo. Where'd you get that old blow pipe? Your cars? My cars and see. She calls herself Panchita. You got her, your cousin. La escopeta. My cousin calls himself Esteban. Thanks. That's what I wanted. Come on. 
Yes, ma'am? I had to talk to you. Please don't go out there. This fight between Mr. Kane and Major Harper, you're only getting mixed up in something that has nothing to do with you. Something you don't even understand. Yes, ma'am. It isn't your fight. Leave town, go away anywhere but leave. Leave before you get into more trouble. Before you're hurt or get killed. Harry. I didn't know you needed anything from the store. The men are waiting. Ready, Billy? Yes, respect my husband. Never doubt him. Am I to assume from this that you do not respect me? And that you do doubt me? When you send men out to risk their lives over a few head of cattle, yes, I do doubt you. Are your cattle more important to you than the lives of your men? All you're interested in is the safety of your property. I think it's shameful of you to take advantage of a boy like that. To use him. A boy of my own age. Alexander, I... A boy of your own age. I see. Maybe it was a mistake to bring you out here so soon. Before the territory is settled and at peace. Then send me home. No. Doing that would make our marriage appear as a failure. And it is not going to be a failure. In other words, I'm your property and... You are my wife. And God hath joined that no man put asunder. Please send me home. A man needs his wife with him at his side to give him strength and encouragement to love and comfort him. Let me go. Let me go. I can't stand there if you near me. Jameson was still running the place, it might be different. But we don't get paid enough to run around getting shot at for Mr. Alexander Kane. No, sir. Are you still belly aching? We're getting back what they stole. You're coming along. I ain't taking no orders from no snot nosed Texas kid. No! <laughs> If you want to quit? Hey, 
Corey's better come on before he gets kid mad. Is no robbery. And they'd hardly worth bothering with that many. I don't count the more than about uh, 40 head. You men wait here. I'll be right back. <laughs> sure, it's quiet around here. Senor, I am coward like you, but until El Chivito goes home, I do not go home. And if you try to go home, I will put a very large hole in your head. This is a promise. I sure wish I was back in Texas. Doggone those people you meet around here. Kind of far away from home, ain't you, Sonny? You know, we don't take kindly to strangers walking into houses without being invited around here. Stay right where you are, Bunny. Keep your hands away from them guns. and citizens unable to go out for fear of being shot, and you bring me out to Davids. Gentlemen, I was sent out here to establish law and order in Lincoln County, and I'll have it if I have to call in United States troops. I'm not responsible. Then who is? Who hired that murdering kid? And don't say he ain't yours. You bought him, remember? General Wallace, suppose I tell Suppose you. I tell you. In my opinion, you're equally guilty, all of you. But we can settle one thing. Mr. Rand, Mr. Copeland, you're both out of office. Starting today, the sheriff of Lincoln County is Mr. Pat Garrett. Well, Neville has been a peaceable man. And I too. Hmm. Well, now perhaps we can get somewhere. I'll start with you, Major Harper. Are you willing to call it quits and get rid of those gunfighters of yours? That means right now. I am, if Mr. Kane is. I've already put my ranch hands back to work. Well, what about this boy, this, this Billy? Billy the Kid is no responsibility of mine. He disobeyed my orders. I never wanted bloodshed. Mr. Copeland will verify that. Well, where is he? There are several warrants out for him. I was told you undertook his custody. In a manner of speaking, I suppose I did. 
but he never came back after the last time. It's a good thing he didn't have to kill in three of my men. I don't know where he is. He's around. If that's an insinuation in my direction, Major Harper, that's enough, Mr. Kane. I haven't seen Billy since the night he rode away from my place two weeks ago. But as an evidence of my good faith, I would be willing to contribute toward a reward. It's not my intention to turn this boy into a desperado. We've just ended one wave of bloodshed. Let's not start another by putting a price on his head. Billy the Kid already has a following of sorts, and to make him a fugitive might be the worst thing we could do. And now, in the spring of 1880, occurred one of the strangest events in history. General Lew Wallace, the governor of the territory, and a general of the United States Army, riding 60 miles into the mountains to keep a rendezvous with Billy the Kid. you had decided not to come. No, sir. Billy, the Lincoln County War is over. I've offered full pardon to all the men on both sides to put down the guns and return to their homes. Now I'm making the same offer to you. I can't, sir. Why not? I can't. You realize what this decision means? You know Pat Garrett? Yes, sir. He's a dogged man, Billy. Also, there'll be a reward out for you. Ten thousand dollars, dead or alive. You'll be all alone. I expected that, sir. Everywhere you go, day and night, you'll be hunted. Every man you meet will be tempted to turn you in for the reward. That's not much of a life. Especially for one as young as you are. I don't understand you. Why did you come to meet me? You sent for me, sir. Is there nothing I can do or say to persuade you to put those guns down? Even to leave the territory and go somewhere else and make a start? No, sir, General. Well, I wish I could say good luck. One new 
show has dispensed. Execution by hanging on May 13th. Black Knight on the red tent. Huh? On the red tent. Howdy, Barnes. You here again? Yeah, just dropped around to see how our little jailbird's getting along. Keep them chains didn't I? Only a few more days, eh, kid? Where'd you get my gun? What are you, kid? You ain't gonna need them where you're going. They look good on a man, don't they? And it's gonna be a happy day for me when they hang you, kid. 
$10,000 reward. Too bad I didn't get you first. <laughs> Ain't it, though? Well, you can't have everything. Oh, I got news for you. Just found out who put up most of the reward. Mr. Alexander King. Oh, I don't believe it. It's a fact. Ain't it, Barnes? Yeah. Kind of peculiar, don't you think? Man you used to ride for, putting up bounty money that way. Kind of looks like he wanted to take you out of circulation. Couldn't be you was shining up to that young wife of his. Or could it now? No, it couldn't. Struck a spark, eh? <laughs> Real tough hombre. And a ladies man, too. This is a real hard customer. You better keep an eye on him. Be around to see his swing, kid. Don't you get tired cheating nobody but yourself? Show the table over here and I'll play you some stud. What are you buying with? You got my saddle yesterday. That was yesterday. My credit good? No credit. All right. Twenty dollars against my spurs and boots.
go out in the kitchen and prepare some food. Si, senora. Lots of food. You're not thinking of feeding them. Do as you're told, Maria. yourself by holding those people as hostages. I'm coming in after you, Bonnie. Come ahead. What about the women and Mr. Kane? Women can go. He stayed. Why? He likes the excitement. Besides, we kind of figured he started all this. Wait a minute. You ladies better leave. You heard what he said, Mrs. Kane. Better go. No. Mrs. Kane doesn't leave unless I do. Nobody does. Why don't I just plug the old goat? Oh, you murdering hoodlums. Oh, you're wrong about me. I never did any harm to you. When Mr. Jameson died, I took you in. Don't you remember? I gave you a job and a place to stay. You had me do your killing. When you got through with me, put a price on my head. I don't believe it. Why don't you ask him? You couldn't have. Of course I didn't. All right, I did. I contributed like everybody else. I was forced to. If I hadn't, the others would have thought... Are they coming out? They're coming. They're waiting for you, ma'am. No. I read. Sorry, ma'am. Why did you come here? Why didn't you leave when I asked you to? Why? You better go, ma'am.
1881, with the close of the Battle of Lincoln, Billy the Kid's killings had now reached a total of 21. After six weeks, his whereabouts were still unknown. Thank you, Mrs. Kane. I'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Thank you. Do you recognize this line? Lewis picked it up in the chaparral yesterday when he was moving his sheep. It's the kids, all right. What gets me is, with nothing but country any way he wants to ride, why don't he clear out? If I could answer that, I... Excuse me. Goodbye, and thank you for everything. Sorry to see you leave, Mrs. Kane. I'm sorry, too, but... Well, I don't know how you feel. Your home is in Missouri, isn't it? If there's anything I can do... Oh, no, thank you. Mr. Hale has promised to look after things for me. He's driving as far as Fort Sumner. Well, Mrs. Kane... Has Billy ever made any attempt to get in touch with you since... Well, no. Well, I was only curious. I was sure you'd have told me if he had. Naturally, I was. You were kind to him, weren't you? Yes. Or I tried to be. He seemed so strange. So alone and friendless. Somehow I had the feeling that if Mr. Jameson hadn't been killed, he worshipped Mr. Jameson. So I've been told. There's nothing to be done for him, is there? No, I'm afraid not. Mr. Hale is waiting. I guess I'd better go. Goodbye, Mrs. Hale. Goodbye, dear. You've been very kind. Goodbye, Lupita. Felicidades. Maria. Margarita. Que Dios la bendiga. Buen viaje. Starting over at Maxwell? I reckon we would, seeing it's about the only place. You'll like Mrs. Maxwell, ma'am. Keeps a nice house. Get up. Goodbye, Mrs. Kane. Goodbye.
Billy. This is Pat Garrett. With 21 notches on his guns, Billy the Kid was just 21 years, 4 months and 5 days old on the day he died. Historians have called him a bandit. Ballad makers a Robin Hood. But after 70 years, the fairest verdict was probably that of the humble Mexicans who buried him, who called him simply El Chivito, the kid, and left his final judgment to God.